G'day ZKD here and welcome back for another Path of Exile Awakening beta video. Since I'm going away for a couple days and while I'll be away there's going to be a wipe of the beta, everything's going to be wiped clean, I thought I'd show you some of the stuff that I've worked on, some of the things that I have discovered and learned about Path of Exile The Awakening. This first character I'm going to be showing you here is a Spark Totem character, or a Spearser. A Spearser, right? Because it used to be Spork was all the rage back in the original closed beta, so I thought now that we're in another closed beta, years later, that we would go back to the glory days of Path of Exile and try some Spork action. Now, uh, I don't think that Fork is the best choice anymore, whereas it was, like, clearly the best choice uh, way back when. And that was because uh, Fork would originally cause the projectiles to renew their duration. So what happens with Spark is, when, you, when a Spark travels out from your character, it bounces around and travels around and it has a set duration and a set travel speed. So it travels its length based on its duration multiplied by its traveling speed. Now when uh, a, a spark would hit an enemy and fork and then fork off into two additional sparks, those two new sparks would be completely new sparks and they'd have a refresh duration. So the result of this was having a spark hit an enemy would cause two new sparks to bounce around that would stick around for a very long time and you'd end up filling up the screen with sparks. And uh, spark builds are pretty much all about filling the screen with sparks, having as many sparks out as possible and having them do as much damage as possible through that. Now, Fork is probably still a decent option, but now that Fork doesn't reset that timer, I feel like PS is a much more nicer choice. So that's what I'm using with this character. I'm using Spark, and this is, I've got this in the chest here, Lion Eyes Vision, which is one of the new uniques, actually, that uh, has Socketed Gems are supported by level 15 PS. A bit of an unusual use for this item, considering it's an armor-based item, but someone on the beta managed to get a four blue socket uh, version of this, so I thought I'd, I thought I'd give this a, a bit of a roll with a Spark Totem character. So I'm currently running Spark with Spell Totem, Lightning Penetration, and Faster Casting. Um, and obviously we have the built-in PS for the 5 link. Now, excellent other supports you can use are things like Increased Duration. And you know, if for some reason I didn't have this blue here and I still wanted to use this chest, then I would instead use something like Increased Duration, which is kind of a damage multiplier for Spark as well, because it keeps those Sparks around for longer. So the idea is that you put your two totems down. I am, of course, playing a Ancestral Bond character. And then they each start spending out uh, multiple Sparks. And then uh, those Sparks hit enemies. And as long as the PS procs, which... Uh, you know, happens most of the time, and then the spark will be able to go through the target, hit a wall, bounce back, and come back and hit the target. Now, Pierce is nice because it doesn't sacrifice any damage. There's no damage loss on Pierce as compared to something like Fork, so that works very nicely. And the build is also kind of built around the, I the idea of this new Reign of Splinters duel. Now, this is one of the legacy Reign of Splinters duels in the beta. They have updated this to have a bit of, d bit of a damage penalty on it, but... Um, it's still, I think, worth it even with damage penalty. It's kind of like a, a free LMP with just the regular damage penalty, but you don't need to spend a support gem slot on it. So there's no need for LMP or GMP on here. You can do that much more efficiently just by using a single jewel. So that works really nicely. Totems in general in the beta seem a lot nicer. Uh, Totem gem is now available from much uh, earlier on and gets more damage than previously before. And then with the addition of something like Reign of Splinters, Totem builds are looking nicer and nicer. You've probably seen Pox play uh, uh, Freeze Pulse Totems, which look really nice. I've seen some ranged attack Totem builds that look really nice. So I thought that we might be able to try some uh, Spark action you out. Now Spark in general, I think uh, obviously the shotgunning removal uh, hurt Spark's single target potential quite a bit. And now for leveling, where it kind of could be used for leveling before, it's really not that good. I uh, I did try to use it for leveling multiple times, and uh, although it was kind of possible as like a support totem, uh, Lightning Tendrils or anything like that was just a way better choice. In fact, even when I had started specking into Spark-related things, Ball Lightning was still clearly a better choice. And I think overall, Ball Lightning is currently a better skill in the beta. But... Um, I'm able to use these Spark Totems, and I think it's starting to look okay. I mean, on live currently, Spark Totems are viable, um, and this is, you know, this is looking a little bit better. Like, it puts a pretty good amount of Sparks out pretty quickly. The Sparks tend to bounce around with increased duration specking and projectile speed. Uh, they end up traveling around quite a bit in that time, and with Pierce, the actual damage on the Spark is left 
pretty much, uh, you know, uh, there's no real reductions. Like, it's pretty much left as pure damage. So, you can get pretty decent damage, and that's currently on my character with very little uh, specking into crit. Eventually, as this character levels up further, it would get a lot more crit. It would get crit from uh, in the Witch here, and it would get crit from over here as well. Currently, I just have Doomcast and a little bit from the Shadow, but there's room for a lot more. You'd never get super high crit with a build like this, like maybe 40% or something is what you'd be aiming to get. But, uh, it would be, it would be a decent amount with the, whoa, that was a lot of damage. With the amount of sparks you can put out, the damage can actually be pretty nice. Now, the thing about Spark is, of course, that Spark is much better indoors than it is outdoors. Now, once you start to get a lot of projectile speed and a lot of increased duration, uh, it becomes passable outdoors, but it really excels in, in maps like this, like Ledge, you can see those sparks bouncing around. And, you know, this looks alright, right? I mean, it's got the advantages of totem builds, where you can place those totems uh, forwards and be fairly safe yourself. Uh, there's a bit of a ramp up time on Spark, so Spark starts out pretty slow. But um, once those, once you got those two totems down, and after about a second or two, once the sparks start to fill the area, they do start to become pretty decent. And I mean, it, it looks okay, it's possible. I think it's better than probably what it is on live. There's probably more potential for it than what there is on live. But uh, it's not really going to, uh, I don't think it's really gonna blow anyone away. But you know, if you were really fond of the spark playstyle, I think there's definitely some potential here for you to make it and uh, enjoy a spark totem build once again. Though, I don't know about Spork, but Spears is definitely happening, and uh, Britney Spears seems to be rocking it, I think. <laughs> now, I have on this character been using uh, Vile Spark as well. I've got this on a mine so that I can use it on a dual totem build, so I can show you on this pack just here. I place it down, pop that, and it puts a large number of sparks out, and that adds a, a lot of extra total damage. Great for killing bosses, great for killing nasty attacks. Works out pretty well overall. So, the other thing that you might be noticing about this character is so something I actually forgot, I was using the Fire Golem, so I didn't even have the Fire Golem up just there. Uh, you'll notice that I'm using the new Eldritch Battery. Now, I made this character to test a few things. I wanted to see, you know, what Spark was like with the shotgunning changes, whether it still worked out okay. And although some single target potential was lost, uh, for the shotgunning removal, so previously you place a totem next to an enemy and it would shotgun it would shotgun it and do a lot of single target damage that way. Now you kind of have to uh, just put your totems anywhere and just hope that it bounces through the enemy and into, into a wall and then back. And uh, that's kind of how you get your single target damage. It works out okay, but not as good as before. So the other thing I wanted to test though was, uh, hold on, I should probably explain the mechanics of Spark a little bit more because there has been some more changes there. Spark is the only spell that can kind of still shotgun. Um, it's really quite interesting. What happens is when a spark, like, let's say, leaves our totem, and then uh, it hits, let's say, so I'm each time I'm, you know, sparks are coming out of my totem, I'm firing five at once. Now, only one of those five sparks can hit a single enemy. So if there's a rare mob or a boss sitting here, let's say my golem, and I throw this down and five sparks come out, only one can possibly hit that until they bounce off a wall. Now, once, once they bounce off a wall, they uh, they reset and they become new projectiles. They uh, they have a new point of origin and then they can all go and hit. So you can actually have all five sparks hit the one target, but only after they bounce off walls. So it really benefits the same sort of thing you would normally build with spark, which is projectile speed and duration, to put out as many sparks as possible and to have them stick around as long as possible so they have the maximum possible opportunity to bounce off a wall and go back and hit that single target. So. That's the, that's the spark thing. Spark's looking okay, nothing too mind-blowing. Uh, it's, I think with a bit more investment, it could be pretty nice. I think ball lightning totems would be way better though in general. Um, hello. <laughs> But, uh, you know what, if you if you really like the Spark playstyle, then it is going to be there for you, and uh, I'm sure some of you guys who liked the glory days of Spark will be happy to see that. The other thing what I really wanted to test this was, though, I really wanted to test the idea of the overhauled Eldritch Battery with um, a, a totem build, which I think is one of its strongest applications in the game at the moment. And that is because I'm using the I'm using the reduced duration delay uh, style of Eldritch Battery. So building around the natural mechanics of Energy Shield. That is that I spend the ES, and then after a short delay, my ES recharge rapid recharges rapidly. So no, not using any Zelt's Oath or uh, Ghost Reaver or anything like that, which have which all have their drawbacks. This is just the natural sort of Energy Shield mechanics here. Now the reason this kind of works well with a totem based build is that you put your totems down, you do your curse, and you, you know you drop your Vile Spark and you pop your Enduring Cry and after that you, you don't have anything to do, right? You just kind of like let your totems do all the killing and there you go, you saw the boss drop there which worked pretty nicely. Pretty good example of how it can all ramp up together. 
So after you've done, like, after you've put your totems down and done your curse on that, there's not really anything else for your character to do except to focus on defense, like, you know, avoiding projectiles and stuff like that. That's kind of the totem playstyle, and it just synergizes really well with the mechanics of energy shield uh, delay. So... This works out quite nicely, and Eldritch Battery does feel quite solid in this style of build. You don't need a big energy shield pool, just enough to be able to use all of your spells that you want to use in, in a combat situation once. So for me, that is two totems, curse, enduring cry. That's like, I have more energy shield than what I need, so I could drop some energy shield on gear. I mean, I'm using a pure armor chest plate, and I could probably even get rid of some of the energy shield on this gear here, and still be able to get by. As you can see, I only, I only use... And let's say I throw down another curse just as well to just get the whole pack then you know I still had a free 200 ES so, so I could drop quite a bit and still have it work really well so you only need just enough to do that and then in terms of character investment for this Eldritch Battery style to work uh, obviously one point for Eldritch Battery and then one two three four for Essence Surge that's all I have I don't think any of the other stuff is necessary I mean there's some stuff here like fast energy shield recharge there and there's some there but I don't think those are at all necessary I think the new Essence Surge by itself is enough what they did was they they, they brought the energy shield recharge rate uh, delay back from six seconds to I think about three seconds and with just essence surge alone that delay is short enough that basically even when you're clearing pretty fast pack to pack uh, that works quite nicely now the benefit of that is obviously you can reserve a hundred percent of your mana and uh, and still be just fine for um, you know your your mana casting without using anything like blood magic blood magic so you don't need to uh, you don't need to sacrifice any support gem slots or anything like that so here's kind of like how the character works just clearing fords like that Basically run forwards, drop the totems, you know, do any cursing that you need to do, and uh, by the time you get to the next pack, or by the time you need to recast your totems, your energy shield should hopefully be recharged, and it plays it plays fairly smoothly. I mean, it depends it depends kind of like on exactly how fast you're clearing the map. I think when you're clearing really fast sometimes and, and casting those totems over and over again, then uh, there might be a couple times where you have to like back off for half a second or one second, but overall it works pretty well. So this is kind of like. I think the best case scenario for Eldritch Battery in the beta currently. And uh, as you can see, I have 100% of my mana reserved. I'm using Wrath, Herald of Ice, and Herald of Thunder here. And uh, that works out really nicely. I don't have to have any mana unreserved. And that's with the new mana. Uh, you know, reduced mana no longer works. So I don't... These are just linked in here from... Pre that's just linked in there from previously before that change happened. But with the new mana reservations, so 50% on Wrath, 25%, 25%. That's obviously 100% of mana. Completely reserved. Uh, no mana investment on this build, no, uh, no, no, uh, aura passives at all, so, uh, just working just kind of like just off the skill gems itself, and that obviously works pretty nicely, so, this is kind of like the best case scenario for Eldritch Battery, I've tried a few different things now, I've tried Zealot's Oath, I've tried, uh, I've tried Ghost Reaver, and I've tried this delay style, and if you have a build that mechanically synergizes well with that delay style, then it does work out quite well, and it is a pretty nice option. I mean, for this character, I had planned already on kind of like taking the route that I was taking, so spending the extra couple points to get Eldritch Battery was really, uh, really kind of a no-brainer. So uh, that worked out pretty nicely. So, uh, just for you guys curious about how Spark builds work, I'll go through the passive tree really quickly, and I'll also go through the rest of my gear. Uh, in case you guys want to uh, test this on the beta yourself a bit, or just keep a, keep some of this in the back of your mind for maybe when the Awakening comes out, because this sort of thing should still work quite well. So I started Templar, you know, no, no real no real major reason for that, uh, except that he gets totems pretty early and I wanted to level totems. You can now level totems, I think, from about... Uh, you can use the totem basically at level 8 when, you, when it becomes available now to support, so against nasty packs or bosses you can drop a totem down, link to whatever skill you want. I tried Lightning Tendril totems, I tried Ball Lightning totems, uh, I tried Spark totem early on, they all worked kind of okay, Lightning Tendrils worked actually pretty nicely for leveling. I was able to uh, sort of, you know, cast Lightning Tendrils myself and, you know, have a Lightning Tendrils totem there as well, doing some additional damage. It worked okay. So, uh, and that, I think the earliest maybe you can go dual totem is about about basically when you get to it. So I, what I did essentially was I went through this area, I got a Reign of Splinters and I socketed that, socketed that in, and then I went Ancestral Bond and leveled with Totems. Works pretty well. Uh, it, the clear speed works pretty nicely as long as you're using a decent skill anyway. So when I was using Ball Lightning and Lightning Tendrils, it was working well. When I was using Spark for leveling, not so well. So I would uh, probably not level with Spark so much. Although passable, not really that great. From there, I just uh, I have this is a nice example of a rare jewel that you can use. This has mine damage, which works with my Vile Spark. Uh, mine allows you, of course, to deal damage when you're dual totem. And this has got like cast speed and crit chance and crit multi uh, with lightning skills, so it works pretty nicely. Now, 
Increased duration is absolutely mandatory for spark builds. It increases the length of time that the sparks stay on the map, which means more damage. It's kind of a more damage multiplier, and it greatly, greatly increases your single target damage as well, because increased skill effect duration gives you more of a chance to bounce a spark off a wall and have, come back and have it hit the single target. So we get potency of will. It's nicely linked up here to totemic mastery as well, so we can get that. We can go through the life uh, wheel, so get a fair bit of survivability and get exceptional performance over here. From there, it's all pretty pretty general stuff. Obviously, we have the dual totems coming across, getting the Eldritch Battery and just the Essence Surge stuff. Uh, it's starting to go crit in late game. And then, uh, you know, for earlier game, you want stuff like car speed is really nice to get, get more sparks out. And you can pick up a little bit of efficient projectile speed here. There is more projectile speed down here, but for the amount of points you'd have to spend, I don't think it's worth it. So that's basically the plan. Uh, this routing here is not very good. Eventually, I'd be routing down through this way and going into Witch and getting Annihilation as well. Probably down to Elemental Dominion and through the spell damage into there. Just to max out the amount of damage that we have. So pretty basic stuff. Just getting some crit that you can get efficiently and then your general cast speed spell damage elemental damage stuff all works pretty well the most important things are just those good totem nodes there and those skill effect durations in addition to the dual totem and it works out all right i did try the tri totem te uh, chest on this character and uh, although it is overall a damage increase i lost pierce um, in exchange for skill uh, skill duration on this character and uh, that worked okay because i had three totems out so overall my damage was a bit higher, but my character is just so squishy with this thing. The curses, even though you can mitigate them with like a curse immunity granite, uh, having three totems and when you're trying to clear fast, so when you're like casting your three totems down and then moving to a next pack, casting three totems, oh, nice. you're getting tri-cursed and you're going to have moments where you have curses up and you just get absolutely wrecked with like three curses on your character. So uh, alright, maybe for softcore, I really wouldn't recommend it for hardcore. Uh, I'm not a fan of Soul Mantle in general, but uh, it is it is an option. And of course, you can do funky things with Lionar's Vision, but you don't really need to. You can use uh, just a regular five link or six link on this character, and it'll be just fine. General gear for Eldritch Battery, as I said, you only need a couple hundred ES, just enough to cast your skills like that. So for me, that's about 200 ES. So you could get by with just a little bit of ES on gear. Like I have, you can get ES on a belt, for example. You can get a little bit on your rings, uh, or you can just use some armor ES gear here and there, and that'll be enough. I mean, I'm using a pure armor chest piece. I could probably use a pure armor piece on a few other pieces, and I'd be fine as well. The other most important thing for Spark is in terms of gearing. Uh, dual ones, I think, is a must. You can get um, you can get the dual one car speed just here which uh, is something I'll probably be picking up a little bit later. And uh, projectile speed is so good to have. Uh, you can get like 30, 40 projectile speed on each wand. I've got 30 here and 30 here, so that's a total of 60-something projectile speed. That makes a huge difference to your overall damage and effectiveness with Spark. So I think dual wands is the way to go, just because you can get that extra projectile speed. And it does give you the option of getting dark, dark arts as well. I'm surprised I don't have dark arts on this character yet. I must have, uh, must have respect out of that to get... I was I was playing around with the the bugged out rain of splinters because you could have multiple multiple of them running at once, which was pretty OP, but uh, good fun. So guys, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments below. I will be away for a couple days, but I'll try and answer when I get back or if I get a chance to while I'm traveling. But uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the look, this look at the character. You know, I you know it was a bit of fun testing out Spark. It seems viable, not great. Uh, you could probably, with a fair bit of investment in gear and passives and stuff like that, uh, make a pretty solid character at endgame, though. Uh, I do love the flame golem as well. I'm sure you guys are wondering. The fire golem is uh, very, very good and uh, very applicable to many builds, and he works quite well in terms of combat and stuff as well. I've got him linked to... Um, uh, life Leech, Minion Life, and Minion Resist, and he's very survivable with that combo. The Life Leech just gives him a little bit of sustain, so he, he keeps himself healed up, and then the Resist plus Life combo on the Flame Golem just means he very rarely ever goes down, and keeps me with that constant damage buff, giving me 19% increased damage there, so not too bad, like, you know, one to two good passives on the tree. Anyway, that is it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.